It's October 29th, 2024, and we are tracking a major storm system. We're going to start off here with the severe weather impacts. The day two outlook tomorrow, October 30th, includes a big slight risk of severe weather for about 15 million people from Kansas City through Wichita, down here through Joplin, Tulsa, Oklahoma City. Even the DFW Metro is now included in that slight risk of severe weather tomorrow. Now, the main things that we're going to be dealing with tomorrow is the wind and the hail, okay? But we do also have a very large, actually, uh, tornado outlook as well. From about Topeka all the way down past Oklahoma City, we've got 2.5 million people under the gun for a 5% probability of seeing tornadoes tomorrow. That's a 5% probability that we're going to see a tornado somewhere in the brown there within 25 miles of any given point. And then the green is going to be a 2%. All right, let's talk about timing and impact. Looking at the HRRR model here, we've got some winter storm warnings in effect today for this, and there's going to be some significant snow, especially in the higher elevations. But watch what happens as I push this forward. You can see the swirling motion of the low pressure system moving that moisture and that energy down to the south and east. What you can't see is the dew points and the temperatures rising and advecting up to the north and getting ready to clash with that. Now, a little bit of clashing is going to happen this evening. Uh, I do think that we have at least somewhat of a chance of some severe weather today on the front side of the storm system. And even the Storm Prediction Center is showing a marginal risk of severe weather today from about Sioux City down past Wichita into the western portion of Oklahoma. This is going to be mainly a hail threat, some lightning, some thunder, some brief rain. The storms today are not going to be that big of a deal at all. However, if we go farther into the day tomorrow, once again, something's happening here. All this moisture from the Gulf of Mexico is really starting to get sucked up into the system and around 1 p.m. you can really start to see it showing up here in the north central portions of the United States. Now I actually think that we'll see some convection earlier than this. There's a possibility that we'll actually see some morning time severe thunderstorms in places like South Dakota, Minnesota, Iowa, and Nebraska, but definitely things are going to start getting more intense from north to south starting around 1 p.m. eastern. We're going to have those storms popping up here in Nebraska. Watch the zipper effect. It's going to go down through Kansas. Kansas, these storms right here are going to be big. About 6 p.m. just to the west of the Kansas City metro, we're going to have hail, potentially golf ball size hail or larger, strong damaging winds in excess of 60 miles per hour. And this is also one of the areas where I really do think that we could see an isolated tornado or two. But it doesn't stop there. Watch. 7 p.m., 8 p.m., 9 p.m., the zipper effect continues, right? We continue to see that convection happening farther to the south and west. Now we've got storms popping up around the OKC metro area. These storms are also going to be capable of producing tornadoes. Now, the farther north you go, yeah, the storms start earlier, but they also start to weaken a lot faster as well. So by the time these storms are moving through Des Moines, by the time they're working into the Madison, Wisconsin area, they're going to be mostly heavy rain makers. We've still got to worry about the wind and maybe some hail, especially the farther south and west you go, like in Des Moines, but the tornado threat's going to diminish quite quickly this far north. We're going to be mostly focused down here around 9 or 10 p.m. for the tornado threat. But Let's keep going. Storms continue to be intense all the way into the midnight hour on Halloween. This is October 31st, 12 a.m. Strong storms moving into eastern Iowa now. Mostly a wind and hail threat at this point. Mostly a wind threat in Missouri as they're moving through central Missouri. And then if there's any lingering tornado threat at all at midnight, it's going to be in Oklahoma. But by the time we get to, say, 3 a.m. eastern, 4 a.m. central, this is going to be not really a tornado situation at all. This is going to be mostly a damaging wind event as the storms are going to be moving into the Fort Worth and Dallas metro by this time. And of course, the farther into the future we go, the weaker the storms are going to get by the time they get to St. Louis and Chicago, 5 a.m. on Halloween morning, they're going to be a broken line of thunderstorms. Now, they could still be strong. We could still see severe thunderstorm warnings uh, for wind, but the tornado threat's going to be pretty low at this point. But check this out. We've got snow on the backside, real life heavy snow, potentially around Duluth, 8 a.m. October 31st. And, you know, once again, this is one of the places where a week ago we were thinking that, hey, it's going to be really warm up here in Minnesota. <laughs> 
on Halloween. Boy, was I wrong about that. And you see, the thing is, is the mechanism for warmth is still there, but it's farther east. The system moved faster than what we thought it would. So now all of that record warmth, all of that really odd weather for Halloween is going to be farther to the east. So if you're anywhere over here on the east coast, it's going to feel a lot warmer than it should be during trick or treat. And speaking of snow, we're going to have quite a bit of it over here in the Rockies, especially in Wyoming. There's a couple places that'll get over two feet of snow, especially really high up, but even, you know, a little bit closer to the ground, not quite in the valleys, but some places will get two to four inches here in Utah, western portions of Colorado. It's not all about the three or 4,000 foot elevation areas, but it's mostly about that for this one. I think that in the future, we're going to be talking about more widespread snowstorms, even for places closer to sea level. Something that we are going to get a lot of at sea level is rain, especially if you're in Wisconsin or Iowa here. Uh, just over the next little bit during this storm system, we're going to see anywhere from two to three inches of rain in southwestern Wisconsin up there in northeastern Iowa. Everybody else has a decent chance of seeing a trace of rain all the way up to an inch of rain in Missouri, Illinois, eastern portions of Kansas, eastern portions of Oklahoma. Lots of uh, Arkansas and Texas is also included in that, but you can see that it's kind of hit or miss. You could very easily get no rain with this system, for example, if you're in southeastern Texas or southeastern Arkansas, or if you're just a little bit too far west in Oklahoma. But fear not, okay? This is not the only chance that we'll see for rain, okay? Obviously, uh, today, tomorrow, we're going to have our rain here in the central U.S. It's much welcomed. It's going to help the drought. And of course, we're still looking at that big high pressure system over here in the east, bringing about a very warm Halloween. Speaking of Halloween, if you do trick or treat on Halloween night, October 31st, around 8 p.m. Eastern, it's going to be rainy in a lot of the Great Lakes area. Detroit, we're talking about rain. Cleveland, Columbus, Cincinnati, Louisville, maybe uh, Nashville, Memphis, all the way down to New Orleans, maybe even Houston. We're talking about a rainy night for trick or treat. It's going to be cold and dreary back here in the upper Midwest, but it's going to be really nice and abnormally warm uh, a little bit farther to the east. But eventually, some slightly cool air is going to take over the entire northeast, but it's very quickly going to be replaced with some more warm air. We've got this uh, very consistent pattern that we're going to be locked in where things are going to try to be much colder in the west and much warmer in the east. It's not going anywhere anytime soon. And that also means that these systems that produce rain, they're not going anywhere. So if you've missed out on the rain in Texas, Oklahoma, or Kansas, or any of these places with the system that's coming through today and tomorrow, don't worry. Saturday, Sunday, another soaker is coming in. And I think that a lot of places, especially in Oklahoma and in the panhandle of Texas there, are going to see a ton of rain from this. And then we've got another big system, another big trough coming out of the west here that's going to cause a widespread storm system as we go into early next week. Election day could be a rough weather day. It's too far out right now to tell you exactly what that means and where the impacts will be, but it does look like another mid-country uh, system that'll probably produce a small area of severe weather and a large area of rain and probably some snow on the backside. But just look at all of that rain that's coming through the central U.S. Another big system possible as we go towards November 7th. You can see it rearing up down here, bringing snow all the way down almost to the Mexico border. Six to 10 day temperature outlook is, <laughs> I mean, it's going to be warm, man. Uh, between November 3rd and November 7th, 2024, it's going to feel like it, certainly not November uh, in Kentucky, in Alabama, in the panhandle of Florida, all the way up into Michigan and southern portions of Ontario. It is just going to be one of the warmest early Novembers that we remember over here. And then out west, it's going to be quite below average with our temperatures. So uh, keep that in mind. And then once again, anytime we get a situation where cool air is bucking up against some warm air, we get rain right in the middle. And that's why we do have between November 3rd and November 7th, especially the very real possibility that we're going to be having above average precipitation right there where we need it. Now, there's some places that are still not getting rain that need it. I'm sure we could use more in the mid-Atlantic regions uh, up there in the Ohio Valley. But, uh, you know, if you're in Texas or Oklahoma, it's coming. OK, and this actually is probably going to lead to one of those situations where we overcorrect and we have some flash flooding problems as a result. So keep that in mind out here around Wichita, Texas. All right. And then how about an update on our little system out here in the Caribbean? Not much has changed. There's no organization out here. It's still churning. It's still trying to become a storm. There's still a 40 percent chance that over the next seven days, this turns into a tropical depression and this might be tropical storm or hurricane patty at some point 
but no time soon. And we still don't have any sort of information about like what the intensity of this storm would look like. It's just too early to tell right now. All I can tell you is that I'm keeping an eye on it. So are the fine meteorologists over at the National Hurricane Center. And so far, there's no cause for concern. One interesting thing that I did mention yesterday is we've got these models that run and they do a hundred different simulations of what could happen. And then we look at the average of those simulations and it kind of tells us maybe our best guess of what could happen in the future. And a lot of our best guesses right now are pointing this thing more towards the gap between Cuba and the Yucatan Peninsula. So if this does become a storm, and we're talking about well over five days from now, if this does become a storm and it allows itself to strengthen, it could potentially go up into the Gulf of Mexico. That's one real possibility right now. The good news, if you live along the coast, is we've got so many troughs coming through that it might get torn apart by wind shear. But another thing that you have to watch out for whenever you have troughs coming through the United States like this is they act like magnets. If it's not a very deep trough, it could just pull the hurricane up towards the Gulf Coast faster, which maybe isn't a good thing. So we're keeping an eye on it right now. That's all the information I have for you. Don't be scared. Be prepared. And we talked a little bit about snow today, and we're going to talk a lot more about snow, I think, as we go uh, into the future. This might be the year of the snowstorm. Last year, we had no snowstorms, it seemed like. And I do go live during blizzards and snowstorms and ice storms and all that stuff. And something that we're trying to do, we've just never had a good opportunity because all of our winters have been so abysmal, is we're trying to have some fun with these Yala meters. So a lot of you guys know if you go over to shopryanhall.com, you can get a Yala meter, all right? The mini version that measures up to a foot of snow is just $19.99. And then we make giant ones too that'll measure up to 42 inches of snow. It's just a fun way to measure snow. It looks good on camera whenever you take a picture and you send it in and we like to show it on the live streams. It's fun whenever we've got millions of people experiencing snow. We just look at your snow pictures all day. And what we're doing with these is next time I go live for a snowstorm, all the pictures of snow measurements that we get in, we're going to take them, we'll look at them, and then randomly select somebody to receive $1,000 in cash. We've done this four or five times in the past, but we want to do it a lot more. If we have lots of snowstorms, we could do that 10, 20 times this year. It's fun. It adds some excitement to the live coverage that we normally don't get whenever things are really sad and uh, serious during hurricanes and tornadoes. So if you want to have some fun and measure the snow in the most stylish way possible and also, you know, help out the channel and, and allow us to continue to pay our bills here, go over to shopryanhall.com and get yourself a Yala meter and you can be an interactive part of our snow coverage whenever we finally start doing that. All right, so if we see an upgrade with our Storm Prediction Center risk, if we end up seeing an enhanced risk of severe weather tomorrow, especially if it's driven by a higher tornado probability, there's a chance that we're going to go live. Right now, I don't think that we'll need to go live for tomorrow, but we will definitely be standing by, and if things hit the fan, we'll be live for you here. So if you want to see that, make sure you get those notifications by subscribing to the channel right now and hitting the notification button. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye. Ooh.